In case you haven't noticed, we love podcasts. In fact, we love building podcasts, everything from development to production. Because of all that, we're building a one of a kind podcast network. If you have a podcast or looking to launch a new podcast, then we should talk. You can message me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz or hit us up any way that works for you. Let's talk about your podcast joining this one of a kind podcast network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to From the Players Podcast, where I am here for all of you past, present, and future players. This is a place where we keep it real and hear from athletes on who they are beneath the jersey and off the field. Without further ado, I am Sydney Supley. I am your host. From the Players is presented by Sports Entrepreneur and part of the Cas Source Podcast Network. I want to give a special shout out to the team at Cas Source. They have made my dreams come true for this podcast and they can make yours as well. If you have any aspirations of hosting your own podcast, talk to my guy, Eric. You can find him on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz, K-A-Z. He is all about giving people a platform and letting their voice be heard. So reach out and you won't regret it. Welcome back, everybody, to From the Players Podcast. I am so excited to be here just one-on-one with you all today. It has been a long time in the making, but we have had some incredible guests on lately, and I am just so thankful for this entire softball community. When I started this podcast, truthfully, that was something that I was so kind of unsure of the outreach and how many people were going to want to be on the podcast. And every single person that I've asked, the immediate yes has been unreal. And it just makes me love this sport and this community so much more about how willing everyone is just to be able to share their story. And they all just want to be here for you guys and hope to inspire you all. And let me tell you, I knew these guests were going to be impactful And I knew they'd be impactful for you all, but I never imagined how impactful they would be on me. I mean, from the very beginning, I think about Brooke Nelson talking about building her own company at age 20, being a CEO, looking to just help younger girls. That has only inspired me to want to give back even more. And then we take it to Jasmine, who is not only a super mom playing and being a mom, but how she's navigated being a social media influencer and having 70,000 people constantly following her, commenting, and how she's been able to stay true to herself and to her family throughout that time. Then we bring on my girl, Kiki Malloy, who I absolutely adore, where she talks about how you can turn passion into power as a woman. And then Jada on her beautiful testimony about faith. Honestly, that episode gave me so much chills, you guys. I was emotional after with her and just so thankful for her being authentic on the podcast. And then lastly, we just had Jaden Fields talked about how amazing it has been just having siblings who are competing at the highest level, her brother, Justin Fields, and just how competitive the two of them are still to this day. I highly recommend if you have not listened to one of them, check them all out. They're all amazing in their own right. But with that being said, I decided with how open, honest, and vulnerable and authentic every single person has been that I brought on this podcast, it was time for me to be able to give myself to you all like the guests have been doing week after week. So that is my goal today. I just really want to share more of myself with you guys because I am just so thankful for this platform that we are building and for you all tuning in every week. I love you and I thank you so, so much. And with that, one thing I really want to dive in today is finding your identity outside of sport. That has been something that's been talked about on this podcast. And that's kind of where my journey starts in learning about who I am. But that took a lot of time to be able to find. And it's something I'm still finding because for those of you who know me, Softball has been my life for as long as I can remember. I mean, I had an older sister who played college softball. So I literally grew up on the diamond 
My very first injury came from watching her in the stands. I mean, from day one, softball is what I've known. And she was actually the one who, when I was still five years old, convinced the pitching instructor in town to give me lessons, even though he didn't work with girls until they were much older. And rightfully so, I think most of the time he had to bribe me with either a popsicle or an ice cream sandwich or jelly beans just to keep me pitching to get through the lesson. But once I found pitching, I was hooked. I loved having the feeling of having the ball in your hands, knowing you were able to control the next play, that what you did would matter with the outcome. And you were just able to be that voice and that face and that leader on the field for your teammates around you. And you were able to help people win. And that is something that has carried me through to loving this sport even right now. But for those of you who get into softball, it can easily become your whole life. And throughout my whole childhood, I mean, I played for a travel team out of Chicago while living in Wisconsin. So every single weekend, we were driving down to Crown Point, Indiana, or down to Rosemont, Illinois. And I missed a lot of things, but never did I regret it because I loved softball and I loved the people that I was meeting and the relationships that I was able to build. I mean, that is something I still carry to this day. My closest friends in my life are the ones that I've been my teammates. But with all that being said, it's so easy to let this sport consume you. And that's not something I really noticed in my childhood because there was still so much fun with it. You still got to go home with mom and dad and you got to take your trips. But then once you get into college, starts becoming even more. You train even longer. The pressures are even higher. You come home to your teammates or yourself and you're just constantly thinking about the game because it's your whole identity often being on a college campus as being an athlete and being a softball player was my identity. It's still the first thing when I walk into a class and they say, tell me about yourself. My name is Sydney Supley and I play on the softball team. I mean, that's what I'm known for. And that's not a bad thing, but there's times where it can become too much. And for me, I have definitely let it come too much where I obsessed about this game because I just wanted to be the best at it for the people around me, for my teammates, for my coaches, for my family, for the program, the alumni, everybody I knew and loved. And all of the hours and time commitments and dedication they gave to get me to this spot where I am right now, playing Big Ten softball at the highest level, I just wanted to repay them so much that it led me to throwing everything in my life at this sport and letting the outcomes dictate whether I could go home happy or not, or I had to stay late and do extra reps or come in the next morning, be the first person there and do extra reps and Don't get me twisted. Doing extra reps is still good. And I still very much do that. But it's when it becomes your whole life and you value your worth off of your sport. And that's where I started to teeter is I felt like I only had a voice when I went three for three that day and had an amazing pitching outing. I felt like I was only worthy of having these things after the game if I was able to contribute well enough for my team. I was only able to see this people if I performed at the very best of my ability. And the truth with all of that is sometimes no matter how hard we train or we work at something, it doesn't always impact the outcome. Sometimes the ball is just going to fall the way it does or it's going to find a hole in the field or, you know, there's still how many other people on your team? There's only so much one person can do, but I just, I felt like I wanted to do it all for my team. And when I couldn't, it ate me alive. And it would just run over and over in my head. And finally, I had to ask for help and I had to learn how to lean on my incredible teammates and other people around me at this university, who I'm so thankful for, who had to look at me and say, hey, you're so much more than a softball player. And it's taken me a long time to trust that but it is the most freeing thing in the world. And so I'm here today for anyone who's listening, no matter what sport you play, or if you're a loved one or a parent or someone who plays a sport, constantly remind them that their sport is what they do, but it's not who they are. 
And my mom told me that quote, and it's something that has carried with me through so many highs and lows in my career. Because even when you're at the very top and you're winning the championships, as Jada Coleman talked about, she won two national championships in a row. And then she got done and she was like, well, now what? I worked my whole life for that, but like, now what do I do? Who am I? I already won. Like, what more is there to me? And there's so much more to us than our sports. So what are ways that we can help that? And I'm going to share some with you that I have learned and I started implementing and it's truthfully helped me. But it's, again, it's an ongoing process and I still, some days I'm better at it than not when I can walk away from a softball field and put it down. But one thing I have found to be super helpful is when a game or practice gets done, you say it in your head or you write it down. What did I learn today? And how can I apply it moving forward? And if you want to add in, what did I do that was fun today on the field or that was fun with my teammates today? So that we're always remembering that there's something joyful about this game, even in the hard moments. It's so important to find, even if it's the littlest of things, because we're so blessed to be playing this game and we can never lose focus on that. But those three things right there, let me recap. What did I learn today? How can I apply it moving forward? What was something about the game that I loved or I had fun with that day? If you can write down those three things, what it does is it takes away all that outcome and it allows no room for judgment. No room whatsoever. We have no room to judge ourselves because we're not judging other people. So why should we judge ourselves? Because we are our own harshest critic. So we have to protect ourselves. But by asking, what can I learn? Is allowing that growth mindset. How can I be better? You know, for me, maybe it's, hey, what did I learn is that I need to get ahead more when batters start in the count, or I need to be ready to go that first pitch when I step in the box. Okay, how can I apply it moving forward? I'm going to go attack that very first strike when I'm on that mound, or I'm going to work really hard when I'm on the on deck circle so that the second I step in the batter's box, I'm on time with that pitcher. I can put the ball in play or I can put a good foul ball that's going to set me up for later on in that bat to be successful. You see how that just switches in our minds and it's so important. And it takes away, oh, I went over three today. Like I'm so unworthy of all these things in my life. Maybe I don't belong here. Maybe I don't deserve to be here. And our minds just spiral. They spiral so quickly. I say that because I've been there. And I want you all to learn from this so you can apply it to not only this, but and other things in your life. Because I promise you, it's going to change the game for you. It's going to change your life. You're going to be able to play with such a bigger heart, more free and more loose. And then lastly, it's just finding the joy in the game. Because y'all, we play a game that is built up on a lot of failure. Like, I know it's talked about a lot, but hitting 300 is amazing. And that's failing three out of 10 times. And that's just wild. So that's when we have to find joy even in the learning curves. And for me, adding in that third layer of that question has allowed me to find so many things around the game that I love that I didn't even realize. For example, I love the 10 minutes we get when we walk onto our fields, whether we're home or whether we're away. We usually have a little bit of time before we put on our cleats and we're able to just sit and joke around as a team where dance to the music, listen to the music. But it's like that 10 minutes where we just get to be best friends and we get to take in our surroundings of what state we're in, what stadium we're in. And you're just sitting there, you're like, wow, this is really cool. Like I dreamed about being on these fields as a kid and here I am and I get to lace up my cleats and I get to play today. Like that is the best feeling in the world. And so it's just, it's finding those little pockets of joy or maybe it's in the dugout in between an inning, you know, you're chatting up your best friend. It's all those little things that you can find even in really hard moments that you can lean on. I know for me, one of the biggest things I look forward to every single game day is walking off that field and seeing my family. 
Because whether a win or a loss, like I get to win because I get to be with the people I love. And it so often, they are my reminders. They remind me every day that this is just what we do. We all go to softball together, but they love me for so much more than that. And they remind me all the time that I am a daughter. I am a cousin. You know, I'm an aunt. I've been an aunt since I was four years old, which I bet is a very fun fact for people on this podcast. And they are some of the biggest joys in my life. But they just remind me of all these parts and layers to myself that I am outside of being a softball player that I love being because my family is everything to me. My family, my friends, and everybody I love. And so keep those people around you. Keep that support system in your life when you get off track or when softball or whatever sport you play, whatever career in becomes your whole life, keep those people in your life that remind you that you're so much more. And I guess that segues in perfectly to, I want to share who I am outside of softball. Like I love this podcast because that's what I want to do is all the guests that I have come on the show. I want for you all to see who is Jada Coleman, Kiki Malloy outside of the field. Because we turn on our TVs every weekend and we see them making these amazing catches in center field or hitting bomb after bomb. And we know all about who they are as a softball player, what jersey they wear. But who are they when they're around their closest friends? When it's a day off from softball, like what do they love to do? And for me, first of all, like I am a journalist, shocker, probably figure that out as I started this podcast. That I love to talk and I love to talk about sports. But being a female journalist has honestly brought me so many amazing experiences in my life. And it really all started my sophomore year when I got my first internship that summer going into my junior year. I worked for a smaller company called Voice and Sport, which I highly recommend for any younger athlete out there. Parents, sign them up. Girls, I promise you, it's such an incredible platform where you can go on and get articles written by, it was really athletes like me, younger athletes who were interviewing Olympians, professional athletes of all sorts of sports. We were interviewing them to show younger girls that this is who you can be. This is who you can look to as a leader, as a role model. And one of our biggest goals was that we were finding women of all culture backgrounds, of all body shapes, body sizes, sexuality, just everything so that there was never a kid who couldn't find someone on our page who looked like them. Because I believe in representation so much. And I believe when you're a younger kid, especially if you see somebody who looks like you and is doing what you do, you believe so much more that you can do that someday. And if there's ever a time where you see somebody who doesn't look like you and you can't find them in a space you want to be in, break the boundary. Like I promise you, be brave enough to break those boundaries because not only for yourself, but for all the other younger girls, you want to look up to you and you want to inspire. And that, especially in the space of journalism, it has taken a lot of digging and it's becoming a lot, lot better. You know, a few people I specifically look up to as mentors talk about so many from Lisa Byington, who was the first female to call an NBA game, who I've been able to shadow. And she has just been such a pioneer for me. In tops of Jessica Mendoza, who I've been able to talk to multiple times on the phone. And I can call a really good friend who has broken how many barriers in the MLB world. Like there's been so many people who have set the path who I am so fortunate that because they did, now I can dream of what I want to be someday. But anyways, back with Voice and Sport. For over a year, I wrote articles with them, created content, really learned everything I could about developing a small business on top of being able to interview a lot of amazing people and realizing that even though at that time I was 20 years old, I could still do this. Like I could have my own voice, whether that was through writing or helping their own podcast, that I was worthy of interviewing all these elite athletes and that they wanted to share their stories. 
and that they wanted to impact younger people's lives. That's what inspired me. I said, I want to be like them someday. To fast forward to this past September, where I started working with a company that I've always had so much respect for, especially being one of the major platforms of sports, which is CBS Sports. And it all started with my residency that I joined them in throughout school at Northwestern in my senior year. And I was kind of thrown into the fire in the very best ways where I was working for their all-female broadcast show called We Need to Talk. Again, another one you've got to check out. I tell you, these women are so incredible. And they're all pioneers and leaders in their own respective sports and all the different jobs they have. From Swine Cash, who was an incredible basketball player who's now in the front office of the Pelicans. She hops on every month and she's talking about the latest and the greatest in sports and what she's hearing in the front office and what she's seeing on the court. And so many other incredible women, including Tracy Wolfson, who for 20 plus years has been on the sideline of some of the biggest football games ever, Super Bowls, also covering March Madness after March Madness. All these incredible women coming on every month and I got to be their digital content creator. I mean, how cool is that? I'm sitting here following on people that I admire and able to just cover them and post about them and hopefully spread their stories. And that for me is when I realized why I love journalism so much is because I believe every person has a story and I want to help tell so many people's stories. So many people who are athletes in sports or just work in sports or helping athletes. That's, I believe, like the true greatness that sports brings out is all these people's stories. And it's a way for us to come together as one community and go out and compete at the highest level day in and day out. So for me, journalism has probably been the only ever thing I've found that I love as much as softball. And that is so exciting for me because softball was my very first love and still is my greatest love. But to find something that I can say, I love as much as softball. Like that just shows me what I want to do for the rest of my life. Because as much as I want to play softball forever, I eventually know it someday it will come to an end. And that's why it's so important to find what you love outside of your sport. So you can take all this passion that you have in your sport and you can apply it to something else in your life. Besides that, I know I touched on a little bit, but I am the biggest family person. My family is everything. Let me tell you guys, growing up, we had family dinners every single Friday night at my parents' restaurant. And those are some of the very best memories I have in childhood. Just to be surrounded by people who love you no matter what, and they just want the very best for you. Like I am so lucky. And I know they all listen to this podcast. So shout out to you all because you are my rocks, my very best friends, and I love you all so much. Also, a big thing that's important to me is I am a person of faith. And that is something Jada so authentically shared on her podcast that it made me just want to talk about my faith even more. It made me bold enough to want to share it because sometimes as athletes, we're told to like keep these parts of our lives private because some people may not be of faith. And if you're not, let me tell you, that is totally okay. Like I have so much respect for everyone making their own decision when it comes to faith because I know I want people to respect me and my decision. So I respect whatever you are or you believe in. But for me, faith has been my true compass in life. It has been my way of finding hope in each and every situation. And I grew up raised by a whole family in faith, but it really wasn't until I faced hardships in high school where I felt like I was at rock bottom and I was losing people I loved and I was facing so many questions as just becoming somebody who was finally old enough to understand and face really hard things. And for me, when I lost what felt like everybody, I gained God, which then gave me everything. 
because it gave me a sign of hope. It gave me a light in every darkness between that moment and today. Because if you don't believe that everything for it happens for a reason, I don't know how you get through hard things. I don't know how you trust and that there's a bigger plan for you in this life and that there's a reason why we're all supposed to be here. Through every hardship, through every battle that I've faced, I've been able to face it because I know I'm not facing it alone. And that gives me all the strength in the world to think that God has equipped me to be in this very moment. He put me here for a reason. So let me go out and be my best because He has made me strong and courageous. And with Him on my side, I can do anything. And when I fail, I fail in confidence to know that He put me there to learn. And so now I'm going to learn and I'm going to trust Him that it's only going to make my story greater. It's only going to make me stronger and greater and more equipped to love others, to teach others, to shine His light to others. That is my story and my testimony. And I truly believe that I was put on this earth to love others and to help others. And that's all I want to do on the softball field, in journalism, for my family, for my friends, in my relationship. Everything that I have, I believe God has given me to be able to give 100% of myself to and to shine His light onto others by how I live life. I just want to be a light in people's lives. I want to constantly do that happy face people can count on with a smile and also the hope people need from when they're going through hard times that I can say, hey, fall back on him or I got you and I can pray with you. I can be there with you. I think some of the greatest moments that I've had at Northwestern is being a part of our team Bible study, which isn't everybody on the team. It's just a small group, but it is so powerful to me week after week to be able to go through this life that we have with so many pressures and challenges and to talk about like, all right, how can we bring faith into this? How can this help us on the field? How can we pray before a game? Or how can I have a catcher who would come out and run for me and remind me and say, hey, this is for him. And immediately after she says that, I know I'm ready for the next pick. I know I'm ready for whatever the game brings me because she reminds me of why I'm playing and it's for him. It's to glorify him and to give him all the credit in the world because he's the reason why I'm here. And so that's my background with faith. And it's something that I hold on to very strong and privately. And I want to give it more publicly because I want other people to hopefully be drawn to his lights. And I want to be the reason why, or I want to be a resource for people. If anyone has any faith questions, how can I implement it into my game? I am here for you. Please reach out because there's so many ways we can play our sports and live our life and honor him while doing so. And another part about me, which is probably a little bit more on the fun side, but I love working out. It is my greatest escape. Because when you're working out, it is you between you. And you are your own self biggest competition and nothing fires me up more than that. It's knowing I'm competing to be the best version of myself day in and day out. And I get to control my outcome because all that matters is how hard I work. And that's all that matters is the work you put into it you can feel proud of after a workout. And you best believe I love my Peloton. I am obsessed with it. I know all the instructors all their personal private lives I follow. I love them. They're so inspiring to me. I love how they inspire others to be the greatest version and the strongest version of themselves in a a world where I feel like society is often telling us to become the smallest version of ourselves. They're out here reversing that and I could not agree with them more and I want to pass along those message. But all of those things are me outside of softball. But it never has made me lose that I'm also a softball player because that's also the part of me that I love. But I'm able to love who I am as a softball player more because I'm able to feed into those outside people of me and I'm able to feel full when I walk away from the field that day. Or I walk away from practice, I feel full because I know who I am outside of the sport and it helps me give even more to my sport because softball is what I do And what I love so much, but it's not who I am. And that has allowed me to embrace every part of however long I have left with this game. And let me tell you, that is a scary thought for me. 
because like I said, the sport was my very first love. And the thought of even coming across the day where I hang the cleats up is something I probably will never be able to accept until it does happen. But I also have to realize that this sport has a time clock. And already being a senior with one more year of eligibility due to COVID, my time of this sport is coming to an end. So some of the things that I really want to embrace this season and however long I play is to love every moment. Love every moment from the game, the momentum swings, when the game's tied up, to the walk-off victories, but to even the littlest of things of getting ready to travel, checking out new cities, being in a hotel with people that you love and call some of your closest friends, all the team meals, the laughs, the inside jokes, the bus rides to and from games, the listening to music with everybody, the hearing the inspirational talk from your coach that just makes you want to run through a wall and tackle all of the world's hardest challenges, the lifts week after week, even when your body may be a little bit tired, but you know you just lifted that heavy amount of weight and you're cheering on the person next to you and you're getting fired up because you're seeing them move up in weight so you move up in weight. It's all those little things that this game gives you that honestly, probably never in your life again are you gonna have 30 people around you at one time in the same building day after day cheering you on to be the best version of yourself. You're not gonna have that again. So embrace the heck out of it love it so much because that's what I'm doing. And that's all I'm focused on is taking each and every day for the blessing that it is. The season is already flying by. We just started Big Ten Conference. And just before you know it, we'll be into playoffs. And it's so important for me that every single day that I wake up, that I remember about what this gift of life is that God gave me and where my feet are right now in this phase that I am in my life. And everything I've worked to get here. So now it's time to just enjoy it. And enjoying it is definitely what I'm doing. And I'm so excited to be able to share all these stories with you week after week. We have so many more incredible guests coming, but I truly love this one on one time with you all where I'm able to share a little bit more about who I am, to be able to be real and open and honest with you guys so you can learn more about me. But so then you can also feel like you can be open and honest with yourselves or with me because I'm right there for you. I'm right there every step of the way as you battle through finding yourself outside your sport or finding the joy in your sport or just whatever you're going through in life. Like I am right here with you and we are in this together. And I'm so thankful for this community and for you all for tuning in. Like seriously, this is a dream come true to be able to share my life with you all and bring people on so they can share it with you guys. Because at the end of the day, we are all in this together and I would not have it any other way. I love you all. Thank you all for listening. And we will be back next week with a very special guest. Once again, this has been Sydney Supley from the Players Podcast. Someone told me that you don't love me anymore. That you don't love me. In case you haven't noticed, we love podcasts. In fact, we love building podcasts, everything from development to production. Because of all that, we're building a -a one-of-a-kind podcast network. If you have a podcast or looking to launch a new podcast, then we should talk. You can message me on Twitter at Eric underscore Kaz or hit us up any way that works for you. Let's talk about your podcast joining this one-of-a-kind podcast network.